If you have ever heard this sound before, then you either remember your young self raving in the 90s, or you are just a fan of either hard techno, trance or house music and you know that this synth, the Hoover lead, always played a big role and can be found across many tracks in the last 32 years. It can be found even today, also in a slightly different form. In this video I will teach you creating two lead sounds in such a style you can use in your own modern hard techno productions. More quality leads like this one can be found in my upcoming hard and industrial techno sample and preset pack. Inspired by Raxele, Ayarkana, Beju or KRTM, it will be packed with heavy synthesizers, fountain kick drums, and many more. Sign up to my waiting list, download a demo version of the pack and get a discount to buy the full product once it's released. We will start with remaking the first lead sound. That, by the way, is also present in the Heart Generation track by Ryan Wood. After creating a simple melody, in Serum, I'm loading a saw wave onto the oscillator A. That will give me the fullest sound among all the basic waveforms. The Hoover synth consists of two key ingredients from which the first one is large unisono detune. The first step would be to increase the number of unisono voices. Now Serum plays five different saw waves through oscillator A. These saw waves have slightly different pitch, plus they are panned. That is why the sound got more wide and rich. As we keep increasing the difference in pitch between saw waves by using the detune control, the sound will keep getting richer, to the point where it clearly sounds too detuned. This is the kind of detune I want to keep. The volume of each extra saw wave added with the unison control is set with the blend knob. I will increase that knob too to make the sound even richer. The second ingredient of a Hoover synth is pitch modulation that gives another feeling of drift we need. I'm going to use an LFO on the course control that allows me to smoothly change the pitch of the oscillator A. I want that LFO to start from the beginning every time I play a note, plus I want the LFO to complete only one cycle. So in the LFO mode section, instead of the OFF, I will pick the envelope mode. All we have to do is to set the modulation range and the LFO curve. I don't want the pitch to go below the default pitch set in the MIDI clip, so I begin by clicking the course control with the left, alt and shift keys held. That switches the modulation type from bidirectional to unidirectional. The modulation range can be set by dragging the course control with the left, alt key held. At last, I increase the grid size in the LFO section to draw a precise LFO curve. I can drag all the points with left ALT key held to snap them to the grid. Let's create even more detune. I will head to the effects tab and pick the hyper slash dimension effect. I will only use the hyper part that is a micro delay chorus with adjustable amount of voices. And at first, I will crank up the detune control that works similarly as the detune knob from the OSC section. To fine tune the modulation I can adjust its rate as well. This effect is going to sound smoother once I add more voices. The unison control here gives the same effect as the unison control from the OSC tab. The effect is set up so why not make it sound more intense by bringing the mix knob higher.
The synthesized circuits sound brighter, but before I reach for the equalizer, I will return to the OSC section and add the noise oscillator. We will increase the volume of that noise a bit too much. Since the noise is hearable well, I can now pick the appropriate sample and alter the pitch of it. Once that is done, I use the level knob once again to bring down the noise volume to the correct value. Now, when we listen to the lead, it seems as if noise has more mid or low frequencies than the lead itself. It would pay off to somehow make the noise sound lighter. We need a high pass filter for that. I will enable the filter and route to that filter only the noise oscillator. All that's left is to pick a high pass filter and set the cutoff frequency to make the noise light enough. To not emphasize the mid frequencies of the noise, I will turn down the filter resonance. Now when we play the lead and turn on and off the noise oscillator, we will notice how does the lead become brighter and richer. You can also play around more with the oscillator A, as we haven't used yet the warping section that morphs the waveform in various ways. I can recommend trying out the sync warping mode for more squeaky sound. Personally, I don't like that kind of a squeak, so I will pick the band plus mode instead. To alter the waveform just slightly. Before we leave the OSC tab forever, I will mention the volume envelope. If the current lead sounds too aggressive, what you can try is to add a short fade-in by cranking up the attack knob. This, together with an increased release, can create an interesting combination. Let's return to default settings and go to the effects tab. There are two more effects I would like to use. The first one will be the reverb. Among two different reverb styles, the hole seems more natural, so I will choose that one over the plate. Do not make the reverb too large, I will decrease the size parameter. This will shrink the background added. The same can be said about the decay, so the decay knob isn't responsible for the whole reverb length, but it can still pay off to decrease that one as well. The sound itself doesn't have lots of lower frequencies, so it wouldn't make much sense to use the low cut knob that removes lower frequencies out of the reverb, but I might like to make the reverb sound brighter, so I will turn down the high cut knob instead. Both spin and spin depth add modulation to the reverb itself. We can hear these both knobs in action once I turn up them by a lot. The lead sounds simple, so let's keep the reverb simple as well. I don't need any extra modulation, so I will turn down both knobs completely. I will make the reverb present a bit less by decreasing the mix value. If you want the whole sound to be even brighter, you can use now an equalizer as the last effect. Here I will use a high shelf filter. 
that most of the times adds brightness into sounds in a more transparent way than a bell filter. Let's exaggerate a bit the amount of brightness added by cranking up the gain knob. Now I will have easier time looking for the right spot for that filter. I will play the sound and tweak the frequency knob to place the filter correctly. The second knob to adjust is the Q value that can make the filter curve less steep. This should give even more natural sound. Once both frequency and Q are set up, use the gain knob to set the right amount of brightness added. Minor adjustments can be done inside the global tab too. The processing quality when switched to one can make the sound more dirty. If you want a cleaner sound instead, set the processing quality to the highest value. Since we have used unisono voices in the OSC tab, in the global tab I can fine tune the unisono voices using this set of settings. The most common adjustment can be reducing the stereo widths done with the width control. We will move on to creating the second sound that sounds more like a screech and is more complex than our first synth. Before I open the serum so let me advertise myself quickly and just say that if you wish to have other sound design or music production subjects explained in such an easy and practical way, consider going onto my website to learn more about my private music production lessons. Free consultations are available as well. After resetting the preset back to the initial one, I will start by again picking a basic waveform and adding unison voices to introduce some width and spread. This time for a different sound the oscillator A will use a rectangle wave. It's duty cycle so the width of that rectangle wave can be later adjusted with most of warping modes available. With unison detune set up like this, I can make the sound a bit more focused by decreasing the random phase control. This knob tells how synchronized each unison voice is in the beginning in terms of the initial phase. If set to zero, each unison voice will start playing from the exact same place with the same initial phase, making the lead more focused or narrow in the beginning. The synths will become richer if I add more oscillators. Let's use the sub oscillator and mix to the sound a square wave. For a similar effect I will add the oscillator B as well, so this time I will use a saw wave. Since I have reduced the phase randomization in both oscillators, I can use now the initial phase controls to alter a bit the way these oscillators interfere with each other. To add 
even more detune, I can use the fine tune control in both oscillators and slightly change the pitch. The first key ingredient that is the detune is added, so let's move on to the pitch modulation. For that I will use again a LFO, but while I can attach that LFO to the oscillator A and B chorus controls, I can't see any pitch control in the sub oscillator. For screech or hoover lead sounds, I need to control the pitch of every oscillator used. In that situation, the solution is to go to the matrix tab, where a few extra modulation targets are available. At first I will choose the modulation source, that is the first LFO. Now in the destination column, I click the list and pick the master tune that is in the global category. With this button, I change the modulation type from unidirectional to bidirectional. At last, with the fader, I set the modulation range. The LFO itself will be adjusted in a similar way as in the first sound, so to be more precise with the modulation speed, the LFO rate will be set now in Hertz, instead of using tempo based units. Slight adjustments can be done in the volume envelope section too. Now for a more clicky sound I will decrease the attack to zero. The release will be slightly longer so the sound doesn't cut itself aggressively. Now I will start making the sound dirty and distorted by using a few techniques. The first one will be the FM modulation, that is controlling directly an oscillator with another one. This FM modulation is a quick way towards warped and mangled sound. I want to use the FM modulation on the oscillator B, so I expand the warping mode list and pick the FM from sub. Now when I crank up the FM amount, I will make the sub oscillator influence the oscillator B. Another way to a more warped sound is the filter section. As always, I will recommend all the filters from band reject to scream band pass that are inside of the MISC category. These filter types work great if you want to add extra distortion. I will pick the dist distorted comp one low pass filter and draw to that filter all the oscillators used. To not lose high frequencies, I will start by turning the cutoff knob up. To add some gain to the sound that becomes very handy when combined with the distortion effect from the FX tab, and we will use that distortion soon as well, use the drive knob. The texture created by this filter is fine-tuned with both comp frequency and filter resonance knobs. Let's move on to the effects section to process the sound further. At first I will start with the effects I already used in the previous sound, that is the reverb and equalizer. The settings are similar. Again, we are using a whole reverb type and in the equalizer I boost the high end. Let's play the lead and turn on both effects. The sound seems already quite dirty, but with two extra effects I will make the sound more aggressive. The first effect will be the distortion that I place before the reverb, because I don't need the reverb to be distorted. At first I set the drive quite high to hear the differences between various distortion algorithms.
I like the zero square distortion style, so now I can bring down the drive to an appropriate level. How to achieve more different distortion flavors? By utilizing the filter section. I can create a screaming effect by placing the filter before this distortion and using an aggressive high pass filter with large filter resonance. The second effect that will fatten the sound is the multiband compressor. The multiband compressor that Serum uses is the OTT kind of a compressor that is over the top. It's used most often in nasty bass sounds because such compressor aggressively compresses and pushes up from both low and high frequencies while taming the mid ones. Our screech also has low, high and mid frequencies, so we might benefit from using such a compressor, especially if it's going to tame these mid frequencies that are currently too loud. The compressor will be placed before the reverb, do not compress unnecessarily the reverb and after the distortion do not change the texture of the sound we have already created. I switch to the multiband mode and start by turning down the threshold. The lower we bring this knob, the more intense the compression is. The compression ratio doesn't always give an audible change in the sound, but when it does, it makes the sound slightly more or less flat. From practical point of view, the time-related settings are also a bit tricky. The attack control doesn't seem to change the sound in any way, and that's quite common for Serum's compressor, so we can bring down the attack to zero. The release on the other hand can make the compression more alive or aggressive when turned down or if turned up can make the sound muffled. All that's left is to now adjust individually the volume of low, mid and high frequencies by using these faders. As of now, all three oscillators are getting mangled with distortion and compression. What would make such a lead more solid is making some part of it omit the whole processing. In the OSC tab, I can turn on the direct out switch in the sub oscillator section. With this, that square wave will omit both filter and the effects tab, making the sound more solid. The remaining adjustments will be done inside of the global tab. Again, since I have used the unison section earlier in the OSC tab, I can tweak the widths of both oscillators in the left section. I will also change the processing quality to make the sound dirtier. <laughs> <laughs> 